Good afternoon. My name is Joe Gerd. I'm the commander of the Double East Junior ROTC. We'll now begin our ceremony. At this time, we ask that everyone please stand and remove your hats. The District 201 Junior RTC Color Guard will now present our colors while the Bell Bell East Women's Ensemble plays the national anthem. Do both. Let them put the flags up and then I'll bring the band up.
Mr. Jason Carsons, the principal of Belleville East. Thank you, Joe, and I assume that everybody sit down. <clears throat> Welcome to the Double East High School 5th Annual Veterans Day program. I'd like to thank Dr. Dozier, Superintendent of District 201, for his continued support. Mark Tessero, Director of the Belleville East Lynn Ensemble. Andrew Ketter uh, for her desserts at our reception following our ceremony. District 201 JROTC for hosting this event. To my right, at the corner of the stage, the POW MIA table. There is a significant meaning to this table. The white tablecloth draped over the table represents the purity of their response to our country's call to arms. The empty chair depicts an unknown face, representing no specific soldier, sailor, airman, or marine, but all who are not here with us. The table itself is round to show their concern for them is never ending. The Bible represents faith in a higher power and the pledge to our country, founded as one nation under God. The black napkin stands for emptiness, these warriors have left in the hearts of their families and friends. The single red rose reminds us of their families and loved ones. The red ribbon represents the love of our country, which inspired them to answer the nation's call. The yellow candle and its yellow ribbon symbolizes the everlasting hope for a joyous reunion with those yet accounted for. The slices of lemon on the bread play remind us of their bitter fate. The salt upon the bread plate represent the tears of their families. The wine glass, turned upside down, reminds us that our distinguished comrades cannot be with us to drink a toast or join in the festivities of the evening.
thank you, concert choir. Please turn your attention to the portrait of Chester Chet Jankowski, World War II veteran and Pearl Harbor survivor, next to the POW MIA table. We are honoring Mr. Jankowski today by having his portrait here on stage. Mr. Jankowski passed away approximately three weeks ago on October 22nd. Thank you to the Jankowski family who are here today in our audience. We will miss him and his big smile. Mr. Jankowski was 19 years old at the time he was serving in the Navy when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. He was on the Oklahoma when it was bombed and pulled himself up on a rope to get himself out of the ship when it rolled over. There's been many stories that were told by Mr. Jankowski. Please visit the table in the cafeteria where Mr. Jankowski's uniform, medals, photos, and many more items will be on display at the reception immediately following the ceremony. I would now like to introduce to you who is representing our military branches on stage in front of their service flags. Representing the Army, Sergeant First Class Michael Thompson. Representing the Air Force is Staff Sergeant Gerard Bilbo. Representing the Marines is Sergeant Gerald Brown. Representing the Navy is Petty Officer Todd Lannerman. Not in attendance in the U.S. Coast Guard, who unfortunately will not be able to attend. We would like to say, we would like to thank all the veterans in attendance today. We want to extend not only a hearty welcome but a heartfelt welcome. For without your service and sacrifice, we may not be here today. <laughs> Joseph Herb, commander of East JROTC, will be saying a few words about Veterans Day. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have gathered to honor our veterans, the men and women who have fought and are fighting to defend our nation, constitution, and loved ones. However, despite knowing the definition of a veteran, maybe even knowing personally a veteran in your family or a neighbor, we still do not know what it means to serve and what it means to be a veteran. Although I have not directly served and have experienced service that way, as a civilian, I have witnessed some of the struggles and traits that veterans possess. Because of that, I have, under I have began to understand what it means to be a veteran. I have witnessed their honor and integrity and in how they always been service before self. I have witnessed their courage and commitment despite all the challenges one is faced with at boot camp, or service academies, or a day-to-day -day life a veteran fights through. Lastly, I have witnessed their strive for excellence. When I visited the Naval Academy last month, I mean, in June, in the Air Force Academy last month, I was amazed by their focus on character development and leadership. The cadets and midshipmen moved by an honor code slash concept. They participated in leadership seminars and always aimed high. It's because of these traits and the observations I have made that I now have a glimpse of what it means to serve, but only a glimpse. I'd like to thank you all for coming out to this, veterans, this year's Veterans Day ceremony, and I challenge you and those of us who have not served to go out Find a veteran, figure out their story, talk to them, and try to get a glimpse of what it means to serve. On behalf of the District 201 Junior RTC and District 201 itself, thank you.
you, the police, will not stumble. Our keynote speaker for today is retired Lieutenant Commander Ian Hendricks of the Medical Corps. Mr. Hendricks is currently a biology and science teacher here at Belleville East. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know, when I when I asked, uh, when I was asked actually to, to make remarks at this very, very important event, I couldn't think about what to say after spending almost half of my life in the service. And so I consulted with my young son and asked him, what should I talk about? And he said, Dad, if you want to be appreciated, talk for about five minutes and sit down. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm going to try to, to defer to my son. And in so doing, I'll promise you two things today. First, you're not going to hear anything that you haven't already heard. You may just hear it a little differently. The second thing that I promise you is precisely what Elizabeth Taylor promised her nine husbands. And that is, I won't be keeping you long. <laughs> but just long enough, because there are some things that must be said. Principal Carstens, to the faculty and teachers, students, and to that wonderful ROTC unit. And most importantly today, to the Jankowski family. In the life of our nation, across every generation, there are those who stand apart. They step up, they raise their hands, they take an oath, they put on the uniform, then they put their lives on the line. They do it so that the rest of us might live in a country and a world that is a little safer, a little freer, maybe a little bit more just. You see, this is the gift that our veterans give us. And that is the debt that we owe them. Today, we are gathered, as we will tomorrow, to once again honor the patriots who have rendered the highest service any American can offer this nation. Those who fought for our freedom and stood the watch for our security. And as we honor them, we acknowledge that there truly is a debt that we can never really repay. So for the next few minutes, as I enjoy the freedom of thought and the privilege of speech, and in keeping with our theme of rendering, I'm sorry, remembering our POWs and MIAs, I'd like to use as a foundation those two simple words, thank you. Thank you to the greatest generation of Americans who fought and freed millions from fascism in Europe. Thank you to those heroes and heroines who risked everything through the bitter cold of Korea and the oppressive and stifling heat of Vietnam. Thank you to those veterans who stormed the desert almost two decades ago. And thank you to all those who have served since most recently, our 9-11th generation of veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan. And now as they continue to come home, we continue to say thank you. But more than that, we must serve them as well as they've served us. And I've always felt that serving our veterans requires a whole lot more than a simple thank you. We, as a nation, have been the beneficiaries of their great sacrifice and their great service. And our response must be more than just, thank you. Many of these great heroes did not benefit from their sacrifice. We did. But they made the sacrifice anyway. As a Navy medic, I bore first-hand witness to the sacrifice and nothing Nothing will ever compare. Our nation's leaders must make availability of real substantive veteran 
veterans' services a top priority. Our veterans must have every chance to share in the opportunity, economic and otherwise, that they help to defend. That means in addition to the care and the benefits that they've earned, yes, that they've earned, a good job, good education, a home that they can call their own. For me, you see, it's quite simple. If you fight for your country overseas, you shouldn't have to fight for a job when you come home. It is my firmest conviction that as a teacher, as a teacher in this esteemed school here in, in our district, the story of Americans veterans must become mandatory learning in our classrooms, in our public schools, not just as part of a history or a civics curriculum, you see, but a standalone lesson to parents when I tell you that too many of our veterans have become invisible. They suffer nightmares and they struggle to keep a job or to keep a relationship. Granted, it is true that after every conflict, there's the risk that the service of our veterans could fade away from the forefront of our minds, that we might turn to other things. But part of the reason we are here today is to pledge and to reaffirm the fact that we will never, ever, never, ever will we forget the profound sacrifices that were and continue to be made in our name. Today should remind us of our sacred obligation to our veterans. As our president said so poignantly, as a nation, we make sure that we have the best led, best trained, best equipped military on this planet. We have to devote just as much energy and passion to making sure that we have the best cared for, the best treated, and yes, the best respected veterans on this planet. Today we honor the sacrifice that has been made in our name for this nation we love. We must commit ourselves to standing by these veterans and their families for as long as we are blessed to walk freely on this earth. They serve with honor, courage, and commitment. We must reciprocate that with respect, dignity, and appreciation. And so let me say finally to those heroic veterans, many of whom are with us today, and to our brothers and sisters held prisoner, as well as those missing or killed in action, all of whom have given some, some of whom have given all. I simply say, from a grateful nation, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hendricks. Next, we will hear Harley Martinez, an East JROTC candidate, sing You Raise Me Up by Josh Groban. Yes. 
we are later. Let us now give a moment of silence for all those who have given the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you for all coming today. Special thanks to Dr. Gozer and the District 201 School Board for your dedication and support of District 201 JROTC. We would like to extend an invitation for all of you to join us in our cafeteria for refreshments and fellowship. This concludes our program. There will be members of the Junior ROTC outside the Performing Arts Center to lead you to the cafeteria. Thank you.